In January of 1988, a single engine launch changed everything about long haul trucking. The Detroit Diesel Series 60 didn't just compete with the Cummins Big Cam, it made the mechanical injection era obsolete almost overnight. This revolutionary inline six was about to prove that electronics could do what eight years of mechanical dominance couldn't adapt, protect, and optimize every single combustion cycle. The late 1970s belonged to Cummins. When the Big Cam series launched in 1976, it solved the power problem that had plagued heavy-duty trucking. The 350-horsepower Big Cam 1 gave owner-operators and fleets the muscle they needed for 80,000-pound loads across mountain passes. By 1978, the Big Cam 2 pushed that to 400 horsepower, and suddenly every other engine manufacturer was playing catch-up. The secret was Cummins' PT fuel system, pressure time injection. Unlike other mechanical systems that relied on engine speed to control fuel delivery, PT injection used fuel pressure and injection timing to meter fuel precisely. A gear-driven pump supplied regulated fuel to each PT injector, while a cam-driven plunger inside the injector generated the high injection pressure. Metering depended on fuel pressure and orifice size. Timing came from the cam profile at this mechanical precision made the big cam incredibly reliable. Fleet mechanics could diagnose fuel system problems by listening to the engine, checking fuel pressure with a simple gauge, or swapping injectors in under an hour. No computers, no sensors, no diagnostic equipment beyond basic tools. When a big cam broke down in Bakersfield or Buffalo, any truck stop mechanic could get it running. The rebuild culture around big cam engines was unmatched. Cummins had flooded the market with authorized rebuild centers, parts distributors, and technical training programs. A big cam overhaul cost $8,000 to $12,000 in 1985 dollars, but fleets knew exactly what they were getting. Another 500,000 miles of predictable operation. Parts availability was so good that many fleets stockpiled common components like injectors, fuel pumps, and turbochargers. Torque delivery was the Big Cam's calling card. The 14-liter Big Cam 4, introduced in 1982, delivered around 1,250 to 1,350 pound-foot of torque at 1,200 RPM, depending on the rating. Later versions were available with even higher torque outputs that reinforced its reputation for low-end pulling power. This low-end grunt meant drivers could pull heavy loads upgrades without downshifting constantly. The engine's cast iron block and forged steel crankshaft were built to handle abuse. Many big cams reached 800,000 miles before their first major overhaul, and million-mile engines weren't uncommon with proper maintenance. Fuel economy wasn't spectacular. Most fleets saw 5.5 to 6.2 miles per gallon, but the engine's durability and low maintenance costs offset higher fuel consumption. The Big Cam's mechanical governor maintained steady RPMs under load, and its robust four-valve per cylinder head design contributed to improved airflow and performance while maintaining reliability. Valve adjustments were straightforward, requiring only basic tools and about 30 minutes per cylinder. By 1985, Cummins controlled roughly 30% of the heavy-duty truck engine market. The Big Cam powered everything from Peterbilt 359s to Kenworth W900s, and its distinctive exhaust note became the soundtrack of American highways. Major fleets like Consolidated Freightways and Yellow Freight standardized on Big Cam power, appreciating the predictable operating costs and nationwide service network. But that dominance was about to face its biggest challenge. Fuel costs had stabilized after the oil crises of the 1970s, but they still represented 25 to 30 percent of a fleet's operating budget. The Big Cam's mechanical fuel system, while reliable, couldn't adapt to changing conditions. Once the fuel pump and injectors were set, they delivered the same fuel curve regardless of load, altitude, or ambient temperature. Emissions regulations were tightening, the EPA's 1988 standards would limit NOx emissions to 10.7 grams per brake horsepower hour, down from the previous 15.5 gram limit. 
The Big Cam's mechanical injection system made precise emissions control nearly impossible. Fuel timing was fixed, combustion temperatures ran high, and there was no way to optimize the burn for different operating conditions. Noise was becoming a real problem. The Big Cam's mechanical injection created sharp pressure spikes that generated the engine's characteristic sound. Music to some ears, but increasingly unwelcome in urban areas. Cities were implementing noise ordinances that restricted truck operations during certain hours, and the Big Cam's 85 decibel idle was often above the limit. Fleet managers were also frustrated by the lack of data. The Big Cam had no built-in diagnostics, no way to track fuel consumption patterns, no engine protection systems beyond basic oil pressure and coolant temperature warnings. When an engine failed, fleets had no data to determine whether it was driver abuse, maintenance issues, or component defects. This made it impossible to optimize maintenance schedules or identify problem drivers. Maintenance intervals were frequent and predictable, but costly in terms of downtime. Big cam engines required oil changes every 10 to 15,000 miles, fuel filter changes every 30,000 miles, and valve adjustments every 100,000 miles. Each service event meant downtime, and downtime meant lost revenue. Progressive fleets were calculating that even small improvements in service intervals could save thousands of dollars per truck annually. Detroit Diesel's answer arrived in January 1988 at the Technology and Maintenance Council meeting in Nashville. The Series 60 wasn't just a new engine, it was a completely different approach to diesel power. While other manufacturers were adding electronic controls to existing mechanical engines, Detroit Diesel designed the Series 60 around electronics from the ground up. The initial 11.1-liter .1 Series 60 produced 350 horsepower, matching the big cam's output but in a smaller, lighter package. The engine weighed 2,050 pounds compared to the big cam's 2,400 pounds, and its inline-six configuration was 8 inches shorter than Cummins' inline-six design. The Series 60's cast iron cylinder head was designed for durability, while the engine's overall compact design allowed for better weight distribution in the chassis. But the real innovation was hidden inside the engine control module. DDEC, Detroit Diesel Electronic Controls, was the industry's first fully integrated engine management system. Unlike retrofit electronic systems that simply replaced mechanical fuel pumps, DDEC controlled every aspect of engine operation. Electronic unit injectors replaced mechanical injection, with each injector containing its own solenoid-operated control valve. The ECM could adjust injection timing, fuel quantity, and injection pressure for each cylinder individually, up to 2,100 times per minute. The system used 15 sensors to monitor engine conditions continuously. Coolant temperature, oil pressure, intake manifold pressure, ambient air temperature, throttle position, engine speed, and timing reference sensors fed data to the ECM 50 times per second. This allowed DDEC to optimize fuel delivery for current operating conditions, something the Big Cam's mechanical system could never do. Each electronic unit injector was a marvel of precision engineering. The injector body contained a solenoid valve, fuel metering chamber, and injection nozzle in a single unit. When the ECM energized the solenoid, it opened a control valve that allowed high-pressure fuel to enter the metering chamber. A spring-loaded plunger then forced the fuel through the injection nozzle at pressures of around 18 to 20,000 PSI, significantly higher than the Big Cam's PT system. Real-time diagnostics were revolutionary. When a sensor failed or operating parameters exceeded safe limits, DDEC generated specific fault codes that pinpointed the problem. Instead of guessing whether poor performance was caused by injectors, turbocharger issues, or fuel system problems, technicians could connect a diagnostic reader and get precise fault information in minutes. The system stored fault codes in memory, allowing mechanics to diagnose intermittent problems that might not be present during service. Engine protection features prevented catastrophic failures. If coolant temperature exceeded 230 degrees Fahrenheit, DDEC would automatically reduce power and display a warning. If the condition persisted, the system would shut down the engine completely, preventing expensive damage. Oil pressure monitoring worked the same way. 
low pressure triggered warnings, then power reduction, then shutdown if necessary. This protection saved fleets thousands of dollars in potential engine damage. The fuel economy improvements were immediate and measurable. Early Series 60 engines achieved 6.8 to 7.2 miles per gallon in highway service, a 15 to 20 percent improvement over comparable big cam engines. This wasn't just due to electronic controls. The Series 60's four valve per cylinder head design it improved breathing efficiency, while the electronic injection system optimized combustion timing for maximum fuel efficiency across all operating conditions. DDEC's adaptive capabilities meant the engine performed consistently regardless of altitude, temperature, or load conditions. The system automatically compensated for thin air at high altitude by adjusting fuel delivery and turbocharger boost pressure. In cold weather, it modified injection timing to improve cold start performance and reduce white smoke. Under heavy loads, the system could advance injection timing for maximum power while monitoring exhaust gas temperatures to prevent overheating. The contrast with Big Cam's mechanical PT injection was stark. While PT injection was precise and reliable, it couldn't adapt to changing conditions. The mechanical fuel pump delivered the same pressure curve regardless of altitude or temperature. Injection timing was fixed by mechanical cam timing. The Big Cam was predictable, but D-Deck was intelligent. The trucking industry's response to the Series 60 was swift and decisive. Within six months of launch, every major OEM had added the Series 60 to their specification sheets. Freightliner, traditionally a Detroit diesel customer, made the Series 60 standard in their FLD-120 long-haul tractor. Peterbilt and Kenworth, longtime Cummins strongholds, began offering the Series 60 as an option in their premium models. Early fleet trials provided compelling data that changed purchasing decisions overnight. Schneider National, one of the country's largest truckload carriers, tested 50 Series 60 powered trucks against their existing Big Cam fleet in late 1988. After six months and 500,000 combined miles, the Series 60 trucks showed 18% better fuel economy, 35% fewer unscheduled maintenance events, and 40% less downtime per truck. The electronic diagnostics allowed Schneider's maintenance teams to identify and fix problems before they caused roadside breakdowns. J.B. Hunt Transport conducted similar trials with even more dramatic results. Their Series 60 test fleet averaged 7.1 miles per gallon compared to 5.9 miles per gallon for their big cam trucks. More importantly, the Series 60 engines required oil changes only every 25,000 miles compared to the big cam engines, which typically required oil changes every 10,000 to 15,000 miles in line haul service. Extended drain intervals alone saved Hunt $400 per truck annually in oil and filter costs, plus reduced downtime for maintenance. Fleet purchasing decisions began following pure economics rather than brand loyalty. A typical long-haul truck traveled 120,000 miles annually and consumed 20,000 gallons of fuel. The Series 60's fuel economy advantage saved 2,500 gallons per year, worth $2,000 at 1988 fuel prices. Combined with reduced maintenance costs and improved uptime, the Series 60 delivered $4,000 to $5,000 in annual savings per truck. The 12.7-liter Series 60, introduced in 1988, sealed the deal for many fleets. With up to 470 horsepower and 1,650 pound-foot of torque, it matched the Big Cam 4's power while delivering superior fuel economy. The larger displacement version used the same D-Deck system as the 11.1-liter, but with modified programming to handle the increased power output. Owner-operators were initially skeptical. Many had built their businesses around big cam reliability and their own mechanical expertise. The Series 60's electronic system seemed like unnecessary complexity that would increase repair costs and reduce their ability to fix problems themselves. But as fuel prices remained volatile and competition intensified, even independent operators began calculating the economics of electronic engines. Major fleets began standardizing on Series 60 power by 1989. Werner Enterprises replaced their entire big cam fleet with Series 60 engines over 18 months, citing fuel savings and reduced maintenance costs. Covenant Transport, 
traditionally a Cummins customer, switched to Detroit Diesel after their Series 60 trial fleet showed 22% better fuel economy than comparable big cam trucks. Cummins responded quickly in the late 1980s by adding electronic components such as lower flow cooling to the big cam 4, but it remained primarily a mechanical design. Their true leap to full electronic control came with the N14 engine and its select electronic fuel injection system, introduced in 1990 to 1991. While the big Cam 4 continued production through 91, momentum had shifted decisively to electronic engines, with a market share swinging in Detroit Diesel's favor as mechanical injection fell out of step with fleet demands. The Series 60 became the new benchmark for heavy-duty engines, with production spanning over two decades before fully ending in 2011. The engine was gradually phased out, replaced primarily by the DD-15, Detroit's newer platform, designed to meet stricter emission standards. Specific displacement versions ended production at different times, the 11.1 liter in 1998, the 12.7 liter in 2007, and the 14.0 liter, the final version in 2011. Over 1 million Series 60 engines were built during its 23-year production run, making it one of the most successful heavy-duty engines in history. The engine established electronics, diagnostics, and fuel efficiency as table stakes for any serious competitor in the heavy-duty market. Every manufacturer was forced to develop electronic engine management systems or risk obsolescence. Caterpillar experimented with electronic controls under its peak system in the mid-1980s, but the 3406E, introduced in 1993, marked CAT's first fully integrated electronic heavy-duty engine. Mac followed suit by developing their E-Tech line of electronic engines, marking their transition into fully integrated diesel electronics by the early 1990s. Even International Harvester, traditionally focused on mechanical simplicity, launched electronic engines by the mid-1990s. The Big Cam found new life in the rebuild market, and specialized applications where electronic complexity wasn't welcome. Its mechanical simplicity remained valuable for off-highway equipment, marine applications, and operators who preferred to maintain their own engines. Cummins continued producing big cam components through the 1990s, and rebuilt engines remained popular with owner-operators who valued mechanical reliability over electronic sophistication. But the highway belonged to electronics, the Series 60 had proven that computer-controlled engines could be more reliable, more efficient, and easier to service than their mechanical predecessors. The age of mechanical injection that had dominated trucking since the 1930s ended in less than five years, replaced by electronic systems that could adapt, protect, and optimize performance in ways mechanical systems never could. 